I want to talk about the new feature called slice view, slice view lines. As I said, I think that this is the new feature I'm most excited about because I think that it will have the most impact on our users. In earlier versions of Echo Project, it was necessary to have data collected in an XY grid before you could generate depth slices. Hopefully you've seen these types of images. If not, here's an example. So I'm opening up Echo Project and I'm gonna open So here's some data here, and you'll notice that I've got a folder called utilities, which is a grid. And when I depth slice through it, I can see utilities. Okay, so I'm slicing down through the data from top to bottom, from zero down to two or three meters here. And certainly at different levels, we can see linear events, which are interpreted as being utilities. Okay, so hopefully you've seen these types of images before. Now, despite the proven power of depth slice images to improve the detection and interpretation of subsurface objects, we hear time and time again that setting up a grid is difficult and time consuming, so many people don't do it. The only reason that grids are necessary to generate depth slices is because when data are collected in an XY grid, we know the position of every GPR trace in the area. Accurate positioning of the GPR data is the key. You can generate depth slices without a grid, as long as you know the position of every GPR trace collected. So how do we do that? I'm gonna show you two common ways. The first, as I'm sure many of you have guessed, is to use GPS, specifically accurate, GPS. GPS more accurate than the GPS on your smartphone or in your car. To make viable depth slices, we need a GPS that provides positioning to one meter or less. When you have a GPS to position your GPR lines accurately, that allows you to use the new Slice View Lines feature in Echo Project version 5. So let's look at a couple examples of this right now. So I'm opening up this data set. Okay, what we see here, notice from, in here we've got the, the map view window. And notice from uh, in the map view window, the GPS path is plotted. And I'm gonna turn off this for a second. So you can actually see the path uh, that the user followed when they collected the data. So it's kind of like a pseudo grid pattern that covers the area in two directions. So notice that if I select the line in Project Explorer, so I'm over here, I select the line and I go up and I click on slice view here, I do get an error message. It's telling me this is not a grid. And so if I'm gonna process this and look at it as depth slices, I'm going to have to use slice view lines. And so there's a number of ways to get at the slice view lines. There's three ways, actually. I can use the drop down. If you look at the little button here under slice view, there's an option called slice view lines. I can also go to the tools menu and select it from there, slice view lines under the tools menu. Or I can right click on the name and pick it from there. So in this case, I'm just going to use the button and I'm going to go to slice view lines. So a dialog opens up. So let's talk about the settings in this dialog. First, you need a name. You need a name of the depth slices that you are generating. And this one's gonna be called slice set two. Um, I might change the name, let me change. I'm gonna call it gulf green. So that's the name of it. Next is the processing. So you see this large area in here where all the processing is applied. And this is the processing that's applied before the depth slices are calculated. The only parameter we cannot easily default is the velocity. So that value is sitting there uh, using a default value of 0.1 meters per nanosecond. So we, to get the best possible depth slices, we do need the most accurate velocity that we can get. I imagine that many of you are familiar with velocity calibration by hyperbola fitting. 
use line view to go through G, the GPR line. And if you find a hyperbolic response from an object crossed at 90 degrees, you can use the hyperbola fitting tool to extract a good average GPR velocity for the site. And you can enter that into the velocity field. Regarding the other processes here, so you can see there's a bunch of processes that are grayed out. I've talked about these processes in, in previous webinar, in my previous webinar on slice view. Uh, specifically, I was slice view for grids. So I won't get into a lot of detail here, but five of the six processes need to be applied to generate depth slices. The sixth is the background subtraction. We'll talk about this option in a few minutes. For now, let's just process the data with using the auto setting. So these are all automatically default. The next thing we're gonna, the next setting we have to uh, set is the gain. Gain is about amplifying the weaker signals at depth. So they are visible in the depth slices. Let's start with auto. So I'm just gonna use the auto gain. And we'll come back to this one after we see what the first set of depth slices look like. The next set, uh, next section is the slice parameters. Select your favorite color palette from the drop-down list. Mine happens to be the default one, which is jet, the red-blue default color, and I'm gonna stick with that. Other parameters, or the other parameters, the, the slice thickness, the overlap, and the maximum depth all default based on the antenna frequency and the depth of the data. So in most cases, just go with auto. The last setting down at the bottom here is how the data is interpolated. The main setting is the neighborhood radius, which you can see grayed out here, which is how far the data is interpolated from the GPR line. In ideal data collection in an area, each pass of the GPR system should be an antenna length apart. For example, a 250 megahertz antenna is about 25 centimeters long. So ideally, the GPR survey should have lines about 25 centimeters apart. And the neighborhood radius should be also set to that value of 25 centimeters. In this case, it defaults to medium. And you can see we've got low, medium, and high in advance. So if we, if we have the medium setting, uh, that interpolation distance is actually uh, 50 centimeters. So we're gonna click it on high to set it at 25 centimeters, which is appropriate for the data that we've collected. Okay. Actually, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the default, just to show you that you can pretty much get away with all the defaults in this and get stuff on the screen. The other setting in here is the pixel width. And the pixel width is the physical size of the smallest pixel in the depth slice. This value is typically a quarter to maybe one tenth of the neighborhood radius. The smaller this value, the longer the depth slices take to generate. So once all the slice view lines parameters are set, I can click on the process button at the bottom and generate the depth slices. So it's churning through the data and it's gonna generate some depth slices here. Okay. Now, they're not actually visible in, in map view because I've actually turned them off in the, um, in the layer view here. So I'm gonna click it back on and we're gonna look at Gulf Green. So there's Gulf Green. There's a golf green data set. And the one thing you notice, and what I can do is there's a slider bar here, so I can slide up and down and we can see, we can see some data here as we slice down through. So one thing I might wanna do is make my depth slices uh, a little less cluttered is to turn off the lines here. So in the line, in the layer view window, I'm gonna turn off the actual lines so we can't, we don't see those, actually the GPS lines. So there, now there's the pure depth slice. I'm gonna slice down through, okay. So it just makes it a little less cluttered when I turn off the GPS line that's on there. Now, of course, you're gonna notice that there are, there are two things that I notice right away with my depth slice. One, there's big holes in the data. So we wanna close those up. And to do that, we have to increase the interpolation distance. Also, when I slice down the deeper line, the deeper depth slices are showing me hints of objects 
but they're not gained enough. They're, they're kind of weak. So I want to increase the gain. So let's do those two things right now. I can make a new uh, set of depth slices with a new name by selecting slice view lines again. But really, I just want to modify a few of the settings of the, di of the depth slices I already have. So rather than creating a new one, I'm just going to modify the one I currently have. And I can do that by going over to Layer View, and I can right-click on my current depth slice. And you'll see a little menu comes up, and one of the options is Delete, which does what it says. And the other is Settings, which is the one I want. So when I go into Settings, I'm back into this window where I was before. And so now the two things that I want to modify are the interpolation distance and the gain. So when I go to the interpolation, I see that um, it is actually 25 centimeters. I wanted to make it 50. So I'm going to go to medium. And I'm also going to increase the gain. And so let's take the gain. So rather than using the auto gain, which we found isn't doing a good job automatically gaining the data, I'm going to go to a level gain. And those of you um, who are familiar with our other software, this, this is a gain level that we use in line view and we use it in slice view. So it's a number from 1 to 12 with gradually increasing gain. In this case, I'm going to pick a middle of the range gain. So I'm going to pick a gain of 6. So let's do these two things. Let's reprocess the data. And it's going to warn me when I go to reprocess, it's going to say, this already exists. Do you want to overwrite it? And yes, I do. So it goes through, reprocesses the data with the new settings, and now I've got a new depth slice. And we notice that the holes are smaller. We, got, uh, we might tweak that a little bit more to close those holes right up. But then when I slice down through, now I can see a lot more things when I'm slicing down. And actually, yeah, it's still a little bit short down in these bottom ones. I'm starting to see this sort of uh, tree pattern down below here. But I'd like it to be a bit stronger. So again, I'm going to go back. Go into golf green, go into settings, and I'm going to do two things again. I'm going to I'm going to take my um, my interpolation up just about 10 centimeters or so, and to do that, I'm actually going to I'm going to go from the default setting, and I'm going to go into the advanced setting, and I'm going to uh, manually enter. And I think to close up those holes, I probably just need to um, I probably just need to increase it about 10 centimeters. So I think 60 centimeters for the neighborhood radius is going to work. And I'm going to take the gain up to, let's go to 9, and let's reprocess the data. Again, it warns me. Come back around. And here we go. Okay, so we see most of the holes have been closed up, which is good. And now when I depth slice, yes, definitely I see strong values. And when I slice down, there's what I want to see. There's, uh, there's the interesting data down below there. So now when we slice down, we can see deeper targets are displayed much better. Now we are at the point where we can stop thinking about processing the data and doing what we are really paid to do, and that is interpret the data. So we see a dendritic pattern or this kind of tree pattern of, a str of strong GPR reflectors about half a meter down. And I can tell this by the, um, by the slider bar in the bottom here or on the side. So when I get down to about 50 centimeters, 55 centimeters, that's where I start to see these strong reflectors. And so I look at this and I interpret the data saying, okay, this is data collected on a golf green. So what am I expecting? Well, I'm probably expecting a drainage pattern. So my interpretation is that this is the plastic drainage pipes under the green, which is definitely useful information if my client needs to do some, do some maintenance on the golf green. Now I want to pick up the conversation from earlier about the background subtraction filter process. We use the default value of zero. So if I bring this um, menu back up, we use the default process of zero, which, which will actually remove any flat lying reflectors that are constant across the whole GPR line. Now this is actually pretty rare, rare for a reflect, reflector to be present on every trace across a whole GPR line. For example, if I, uh, let me come out of here for a sec. If I slice down to about 20 centimeters here, I want you to notice something, 15, 20 centimeters, right in this range in here, we see a large area that is all red. 
This means that there's a strong reflector or there's a, a strong layer at that depth. And if I'm not interested in mapping layers and just want to see small targets, I probably want to filter out this reflector. We see that having the background subtraction filter set to the full length of the GPR line was not very effective. So I'm going to shorten the length of the filter. And I go back into here. And so to get at and change this value, I have to go to the advanced setting under process. And now this is available to, to be changed. So the filter length can be changed. So I'm going to change the filter length to one meter. So what this means is that any flat line reflector in the data that's about one meter or longer will be filtered out. And let's see the effect of this. So when I process the data again, I'm using all the other settings, all the same settings, it's got a new background subtraction. So now when I slice down to about 20 centimeters, you can see that that whole layer has been filtered out. I no longer see it in my data. Now one of the effects, and again, I can still see the, um, uh, the drainage pattern down deeper pretty well. I might need to tweak up that gain a little bit. The um, background subtraction seems to have reduced the amplitude a little bit. But you can see I can go back and increase the gain. So if you're going to adjust processes, so if you're in this window and you're trying to decide what to do, um, most of the time you're going to use auto. But if you do wander into the advanced, my recommendation is to not touch any of these except for the background subtraction. And with background subtraction, generally play with values from maybe 10 meters down to about half a meter. It's a good starting point, uh, but, be, but be careful with background subtraction because the purpose of any filter is to remove data. And the last thing you wanna do is remove the targets that you're interested in. Okay, let's look at another survey area over the same golf green. But this one was collected with a high accuracy GPS, but in a different pattern. Okay, so in this one, you can actually see that the, um, let me turn off the slice, you can see the pattern. So it's a spiral. So it's not exactly a typical pattern to collect GPR data. But on a golf green, it probably makes sense to collect data like this. So let me look at the, I've already done this before. Let's look at the depth slices we have. So, so this one's looking fairly promising, but let's, let's modify this one and see what we get here. So again, we're going to use auto. We're, we know that we probably need a fairly high gain. We'll use nine like we did before. We'll use our neighborhood radius of about 60 centimeters from before, and we'll process the data. And let's have a look. So when we slice down, same sort of thing, we slice down through. Now, actually, this is getting overgained. The deeper slices are overgained. There's way too much red here. So I'm going to go back in and decide that, you know what, 9 was too high. So let's go back down to 6, reprocess the data. And let's make sure those deeper depth slices are looking okay. Yeah, that, that's not bad. I might tweak it a little bit lower, but generally we can see the targets that we're after. So remember, when you're happy with the depth slice image and you want to include it in your report, just press this button up here, the Save View button. This will include it in the GPR summary report in PDF format under the tools report, under this menu here, we're going under tools and report. This will include it in the GPR summary report. Again, I talked about how reports are generated in the webinars I did on utility locating and concrete scanning. So refer to those webinars for more details about reports. So that completes today's webinar. Uh, if you need to go, I thank you for attending, and I'd say have a great day.